This is a battle in the Beta Flash tournament between me and the Persian Prince. I am commanding the Western Roman Empire, the Persian Prince is commanding the Ostrogoths, and if you wonder why I haven't used the Eastern Roman Empire yet, it's because Tegmata are limited to two, and uh, factions that you use can't be used again until the finals. So I need to be a bit careful about which factions I use against which factions. Now, at this point, uh, people are becoming wise to the uh, to the benefits of upgrading upgrading cavalry units to triple gold. Uh, the most important unit in your army in Attila is cavalry. And the player who has the cavalry advantage against anything but a box is has very good chances of winning. Now, when you have a cavalry limit, you have max 10 cavalry here. Bring 10 cavalry. When you have max 4 of the same uh, unit, it's going to be very, very good to upgrade units so you can get more bang for your buck. Um, and as the, as the Western Roman Empire here, I have a few decent options, but they're definitely not uh, even the third best cavalry faction in the game. I had to bring these Equites Promoti, and they are very vulnerable. Uh, the health on these Roman units is not great, so I have four Scolae Palatinae. They have much less health than uh, less armor also than the Germanic horse. If we compare them to the uh, Germanic horse here, let's see, uh, yeah, two forty-seven and fifty-three, two nineteen and thirty-two. So the Palatinae are not as good as upgraded uh, Germanic horsemen. They are also medium, while the Germanic horse are heavy. Germanic horse are awesome units. So my build consists of four Protectores, two Sagittari. I have four Scolae Palatinae, and I use them to protect my skirmishers and my cavalry. I have two Equites, Promoti, a Magister Militum. He is a Brace General. I always bring the Brace General. Then we have a Catafactari, uh, two Equites Promoti, and one Catafactari. I don't upgrade my shock cavalry units, I never do. So the Prussian Prince has done the same thing I did basically. He has Noble Germanic Horse and Germanic Horse triple gold, four of each. And then he has his uh, Royal Sionis, which is also is comparable to the Magister uh, General. He has a very good melee attack charge bonus, uh, but no bonus against cavalry. And he's also a Brace General. In addition to this, the Prussian Prince has Germanic crossbows, Germanic archers, Germanic archers, Germanic crossbows, and Germanic crossbows. So, skirmish advantage, Prussian Prince, infantry advantage, me, because Prussian Prince doesn't have any infantry, and an ever so slight cavalry advantage for me because I have one more cavalry unit. However, if this was a straight up cavalry fight, the Prussian Prince would win that fight with 100% certainty. His, all of his cavalry units are better than all of my cavalry units. Triple gold noble Germanic horsemen are beasts, both, both in terms of armor and health. Um, they also inspire, so uh, I'm going to have a hard time to kill all of these cavalry units, th which is why I have my Sagittari and my Protectores. My Protectores are going to be super important in pushing up against the lines of the Prussian Prince. And you can see I'm already in range here of his Germanic archers. So since I have the advantage on this side of the battlefield, I'm just going to take the engagement. But I do something that's very important here. I know I can't win in a straight-up engagement with Equites Promoti uh, against Noble Germanic Horse. So instead, uh, instead of giving attack orders directly on the unit, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give attack orders diagonally like this. And what that's going to allow me to do, the Prussian Prince uh, looks like he's just about not catching me here. So I'm going to be able to tie down these two units, get into the flanks of the Noble Germanics, then get into the flanks of the Germanic Horsemen. So I definitely get the better charges here. And then I can send my Equites Promoti into the Noble Germanic Horsemen over here. And over here I have a very decisive cavalry advantage. So I'm just sending in my cavalry straight away and going around with these units. Still pushing the center, I'm losing a lot of men on the Palatinae from the skirmish fire. Uh, and I'm also taking a lot of damage here, but the Magister Militum is going to tip the scales in my favor if I manage to use Brace here, and their Brace is popped. That's going to allow me to do better here. 
Uh, now my Germanic, uh, my Scolari Palatinae charge into Germanic horse. Both of us are taking fire from, uh, both of us are taking fire from the skirmishers of the Prussian Prince. Over here I'm uh, a charged noble Germanics with the Catafactori and then with the Palatinoi. Over here I get my unit caught, which is super bad, my Equ Equites Promoti get caught. Pouring the fire into his Germanic horsemen here with my archers while I'm making a very important push with my Protectoris Domestici. So over here it's a uh, two against one situation. I am winning, this is purely because of the way I uh, engaged and because I had more units over here and it's also doing friendly fire. So now that I'm able to get my infantry into this fight, it's very important. Uh, because now I'm going to be able to do damage to his cavalry if it tries to disengage. Uh, here he comes around with a Germanic horseman. I am pulling out my Catafactori just as this unit wavers, so I don't lose any men. Uh, get a charge into the Germanic horse. Over here I'm just going to lose, but the gold allows me to hold for longer get into the crossbows, just pouring the fire here into his uh, royal Sayones. Here I won on the flanks and now the, the flanks of Prussian Prince are just disappearing. Uh, in the center his general gets into my skirmishers. This allows me to, char uh, to chase away his skirmishers so they're not able to fire. I'm into his skirmishers here, I'm losing over here. I'm going to lose this engagement over here. But as long as I'm able to deal with his general, I'm turning around my Palatinae here, but not in time, but I'm able to get my another Palatinae in. And the most important thing here is just keep pouring the uh, flaming shots into his general and keep sending I I infantry. Because yes, cavalry is strong, but if you're able to trap cavalry like this with uh, infantry and not get the infantry charged, when the cavalry tries to disengage, they're going to take a lot of damage. And now the Royal Sayones of the Prussian Prince, they are getting wrecked by the combined uh, forces here. Now he's dead, and the Prussian Prince has a few skirmish units left. His Germanic horsemen are losing over here. Uh, he's going to get a good charge on my Protectores over here, so I might lose these Protectores. But I did win over here. Need to be really careful because these Germanic crossbows could snipe my general. But over here, not much left for the Prussian Prince. He has this one unit of Germanic horse. And look at my general just dying to the flaming crossbow bolt. So I need to get into these skirmishers to stop them from firing. I do so with both this infantry and with my uh, Magister Militum general. And this enables me to trap his uh, noble Germanic horse. So they can't pull out from this engagement. The Prussian Prince still doing damage here to my skirmishers. Uh, I have this almost full unit of cavalry available. My Magister Militum is going to wreck the Germanic archers, and now this noble Germanic horse is dead. It, it can't go anywhere, infantry is going to kill it. So this is kind of how you deal with cavalry with infantry, and even with cheap melee infantry. Just make sure uh, that you blob the hell out of the cavalry with your own cavalry, and then send in infantry so the um, enemy has nowhere to go. That's the game. Pyrrhic victory, definitely a hard-fought battle. Uh, the Prussian Prince had a super risky build, not just his his uh, cavalry was stronger than mine was in this case, and you can see how poorly my Equites Promoti and my uh, Palatinae did here. Two of the Palatinae did well, my general did a great job in killing off skirmishers, but the Catafactari and, and these units just did nothing for the price. However, what was very important for me was that these Protectores went in and got very important cavalry kills for me. And for the Prussian Prince, his general, uh, his Royal Sayone general, got a lot of kills. Mm, a lot of kills on uh, on my skirmishers, but the main underperforming units of the Prussian Prince here, definitely, definitely his, um, definitely his um, skirmishers. And he only brought eight <laughs> cavalry units. Now, what I think, uh, okay, I'll just take a look at the Ostrogoth roster to exemplify something here. Um, what I think might have been a better use of funds. Let's see here. Okay, yeah. The Royal Sayones. Uh, good, good unit, definitely. Uh, so, bring the ro Royal Sayones. But in terms of cavalry, uh, four, uh, four Germanic horse would be the maximum you can bring. Then you can bring four noble Germanic horse, and then you can bring, for example, two Germanic lancers. 
very useful for killing infantry. And I would personally never do what the Prussian prince did and just bring archers. Because, um, sure, you can kill a lot of cavalry, but you can also lose your funds super, super quickly. So, I would absolutely upgrade these Germanic horsemen to triple gold to basically give them elite capabilities in uh, melee. I would, however, also bring some infantry. Um, there's not a whole lot of funds left for infantry, but I would definitely not go for triple gold uh, noble Germanic horsemen in this scenario. I would go for two Germanic lancers instead, get them in, do the damage, then pile in the melee cavalry. Uh, now, in terms of infantry, having just a few infantry units can be very, very nice. So, four... Uh, four noble Germanic swords is probably what I would have brought in this case. I would have ditched the skirmishers because I know that my cavalry does not need skirmish support to defeat the cavalry of Rome. And these guys will hold for a long time against the Roman infantry. So I would actually spend the remaining upgrades on the units that have a bonus against large, which means noble Germanic horsemen. So I would just put the rest of the upgrades there and not get triple gold upgrades for them. Uh, just put the rest of the upgrades and give them silver chevrons. Plenty enough. And this would allow me to engage and win. Uh, if the Roman infantry wanted to charge, I could take care of it with Germanic lancers. Rome cannot bring... Western Roman Empire cannot bring eight good melee cavalry units. They can only really bring... Uh, four in the Scolae Palatinae. However, they are not as good as Germanic horsemen. And um, if we match up the noble Germanic horsemen against the Palatinae, they win against the Palatinae. The Germanic horsemen win against the very decisively against the uh, uh, Equites Promoti. They, I do not like the Equites Promoti. They are way too squishy. So something like this uh, under these rules is something I think could have worked very well. And now I see I have one cavalry unit too many. So I probably would have taken out a Germanic Lancer uh, to not make the build illegal. And then you could, for example, you could bring in an additional... Uh, you can bring in a few pikes to protect your uh, noble Germanics. I would probably just bring... Uh, Germanic archers and remove some upgrades just for the annoyance factor. Something like this is, I think, a very strong build for uh, for the Ostrogoths. Strength and honor. Oh, and good game to the Prussian prince. The last time we played, the game took an hour. This time it did not take this long. <laughs> that long. Strength and honor.